Mototrack here with the second part of a two-part series installing a top and tilt kit on the L2501 specifically. Uh, today we are going to be using the uh, OEM kit. It is a uh, L7334. Uh, I have the entire kit out on a table here. Uh, I usually like to do that to keep all the parts together and um, I want to kind of give Neil Conrarty a uh, special thank you. Uh, he's the only guy as of right now who has a video on YouTube on connecting uh, this L7334 kit to the L2501 with a front end loader and uh, if you go by the instructions they um, are not only very poorly written but they are uh, contradictory of themselves uh, time and time again. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the, the new hydraulic block here per the manufacturer's specifications and then we're going to pipe this in. Now, this isn't very difficult to do. In fact, it's relatively easy, but um, it's a little intimidating if you don't know much about hydraulics. It can quickly get confusing. Uh, so um, this is going to simplify everything out. I just kind of want to go back a second and talk about how this whole thing came about. Now, I never really considered having a top and tilt kit on my machine. Um, until after I got a third function valve. If you remember the grapple video, we put the third function valve in and uh, that was a lot of fun. And then I got thinking to myself, you know, that third function valve doesn't have to just run something that's on the uh, front end loader. Why can't it run another cylinder? So originally I thought maybe we'll take the third function valve and have it control uh, just the top cylinder. Uh, of the kit. Um, but then when I saw Neil's video um, I thought well maybe what I'll do is I'll get the uh, 7334 kit to run the top cylinder and I'll run the side cylinder off the third function valve. So this is how it all came in. I'm sure the cheapest way to do this would be to get um, another um, um, valve uh, and controller and mount it somewhere but um, picking a place on the L2501 is uh, a little difficult uh, to mount uh, another uh, valve and then uh, pipe it all off um, so this is not the cheapest way to do it but it is not the most expensive at my local dealer they charge me about three hundred dollars for uh, the kit that we're going to install down here um, and then they wanted another uh, $350 to uh, install it and um, I think that we can do it so um, we're going to head over to the bench and take a look at the instructions and uh, we're going to do this step by step and uh, we're going to get this um, installed today and uh, we'll get it checked out so let's get started. So uh, the first thing I did after I took all the parts out and laid them on the table is I pulled the staple out of the instructions and uh, I laid them in order uh, to the way I want to go ahead and install it. Um, this diagram right here shows you, uh, which is page 13 of the instructions that come with the kit, uh, gives you an entire exploded view of the entire system. Um, the parts and the hydraulic blocks that we're going to install today. So I'm going to take that out and set that aside so I can reference that. Um, but yeah, I pulled the staple out and uh, we're going to do this step by step, page by page, but not necessarily in the order that they come. Okay, so the very first thing the instructions want us to do is to mount the uh, mounting bracket for the quick disconnects. And uh, obviously I've already done that. Uh, they ask to put a quick disconnect here and a quick connect there and a quick connect here and a quick connect there and uh, I simply to get more space just kind of staggered it out so instead of going one over the other I went diagonal so you know here is one and here is there as you guys can see it just gives me more room to get my hand in and out of there um, and I think that'll work out a little bit better for me. So with this part already done, we can slide over here and uh, we're going to remove the top off of this and then pull this plate right here out. 
Um, so it looks like there's uh, a few bolts that need to uh, be removed to get this plate off. Um, and then once we get this off, I guess we can kind of start getting into uh, removing the cover um, on uh, the manifold and putting the block on. So um, let's get started with that, I guess. Okay, so here, here's the first um, difficult to understand uh, instruction. Uh, once the um, lever guide is removed, the instructions tell you that they want you to cut uh, a piece of the tab off. You can see that they want you to cut, looks like about a quarter of an inch off the tab. Doesn't tell you what tab to cut. And if you come over to the machine, you can see that there are uh, actually two tabs. Uh, there's this tab right here, and then there's this tab over here. I apologize, about, uh, apologize uh, with the focus. Um, when you look at these two tabs, uh, this one's longer. You think maybe this is the one they want us to cut off because uh, there's two of them here, and it doesn't tell you which one. Um, but when you take the mounting plate and you set the mounting plate on, um, it, th this is what needs to be cut right here. So when that's held into place, it'll be this one right here that needs to be trimmed back. Um, and then you can see that there's no hole in here to be able to um, bolt this down and access that nut. And there's actually a sticker that goes across here. So if you put the bolt on, it's going to get in the way of the sticker. They didn't drill this. Um, so um, it, it certainly is a little confusing, uh, but we know now that this is the one that needs to be cut. So I'm going to cut this off and we'll proceed to the next step. But before I do, one of the things I want to do is on this hydraulic block right here, um, we need to take and install these studs into it. And... Um, I'm going to do that first uh, to put a little Loctite on it because um, you only thread those in. You be real careful. You rip those threads out. So I'm going to clean those up and Loctite them in before I cut that off so it has, you know, 15 minutes or so to, you know, kind of set up while, uh, while we're working. So let's bring this over to the bench and get those studs in real quick. Okay, so the blocks over here at the bench, these studs that are included uh, have to be threaded here, here, and here. Um, I'm going to put some Loctite on them so uh, I can put these in and just kind of snug them up. I don't have to reef down on them. Um, everything that's in this kit that comes from Kubota is, is covered in a light film of either oil or silicone. And I'm sure that's to prevent rust while it's uh, in storage uh, before it gets delivered. Um, but you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of brake clean and just spray these threads down on each one of the three studs um, and also inside the holes here to get out any of the uh, uh, oil or silicone that's in there uh, in order to help the uh, Loctite to adhere better. So I'm going to get that in and then uh, we'll get these threaded in. Okay. Loctite is uh, in the female threads on the male threads. They've been cleaned off with the brake clean and I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, get these threaded in. I'll get all three of them threaded in and then we'll head over to the machine and uh, cut that tab because that's the next step. Okay, so over here uh, the tab is cut now. If I take the plate and I lay the plate on where it goes, you can see that uh, it's no longer in the way. Uh, where that lever guide is. So the next thing to do, according to the instructions, is to take this uh, cover plate off the return port. Uh, it looks like they are 13 millimeters, so we're going to undo those and expose that uh, return port and uh, be right back. Okay, so the cover's off now. Uh, I lied, it's not a 13 millimeter socket, it's a half inch socket that uh, pulls those bolts out, but the cover's off. Uh, those two O-rings were uh, already there and they should stay there. And then the, the next thing that we're going to do is going to be to uh, install the block uh, onto the return port. Um, but 
and this is where, again, I'm going to differ off from the instructions. Uh, we have to wind a cap in the end. We have to put a fitting in the other end. And um, I'm going to do that up on the bench. Uh, the, there isn't a whole lot of room to move around inside there. And uh, I think the more that we can do uh, on the bench, the less we're going to get frustrated trying to swing tools in that uh, confined space. So let's head over to the bench. Okay, so the process block is over here on the bench. I'm going to install this 90 in this port here. I'm going to install this plug over here in that port there. Uh, we're going to set it in the vise, uh, but these are machined, so um, do we want to hold on to the edge, not the, um, uh, not the face. So the, we're going to clamp it this way and uh, so that this is straight up in the air in the same orientation that you see and um, I'm gonna use a towel uh, to uh, to protect it to put between here and the vise. I'll show you in a second. Okay so this is what I was talking about uh, putting a, a towel in between the aluminum process block and the vise. Uh, I, I just ran it in and the vise is only hand tight. It's not very tight at all. It's really just kind of holding it and uh, these fittings uh, have o-rings on them and uh, will you uh, run them in and then run this uh, nut down to seal it off a little bit of uh, Teflon paste on them to uh, uh, For good measure, but we're going to wind these in and uh, you'll see what it looks like in just a second Okay, so now this is all made up Let's take it over to the tractor and attach it to the return port with these three allen head screws um, and uh, the instructions say to torque these down to 17 foot-pounds. So uh, let's go over there and uh, mount it up to the to the return port. Okay, so I took it over to the tractor, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the 66-inch hydraulic hose to this before I mount it, um, just because, again, it's kind of tight in there and there isn't a whole lot of room. Um, you'd probably have a tremendous amount of room if you took the seat off and the fender off, but um, it's not too bad. I just figure let's do as much as we can here uh, so we don't get too agitated trying to tighten things up on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 66-inch line, uh, which is a return line, on this 90 right here, and then we'll take it over and uh, bolt it up. So be right back. Okay, folks, so there you go. The process block is attached. The hose is channeled underneath the tractor, and it's just kind of laying on the floor right now. I'll route that out in a little bit. But the process block is now attached, and uh, it's torqued. And uh, just a quick note, you want to make sure that those are torqued at 17 pounds. Um, I put Loctite on them before I ran them in. And um, uh, the reason being is when the valve is installed, there is it completely covers those so once this assembly is put together you can't get to those uh, Allen uh, bolts without taking the valve uh, off and the uh, the end cap off so um, that's it that parts installed let's uh, go on back over to the bench and take on the next step okay so the next step in the assembly is going to be to put the control valve in you can see the schematic here uh, with the handle um, and uh, the elbows uh, threaded in. So here's the valve, here's the two elbows. They want the short one in the back, the long one in the front. Um, I don't know that it makes that big a difference when you're running one valve, but if you're running the three valve setup, which is the uh, top, tilt, and float, uh, then you would definitely want to stick to that pretty rigidly. Over here is the uh, handle assembly and all of the parts that go along with that. Um, we're going to, uh, after we get the elbows and everything uh, threaded in, then we'll go ahead and bring this assembly over and pin it all together. And I'll give you a shot of it, what it looks like before we put it on the machine. Okay, so we have the uh, 90 degree elbows uh, put in. I ran them in at about a 45 degree angle so that uh, I have plenty of room and some swing to uh, get the lines made up. I am not going to put the lines on to make the valve up. I'll make the valve up and put the lines on last. Um, I set the valve in the vise just as a third hand. And be careful because on the back you have five O-rings there. So make sure that you don't crush or break or lose those O-rings when you set it in. 
just set it in and snug this up so that you can uh, use both hands. We're going to put the lever on here and uh, it's going to require me to have two hands while we do all the linkages. So uh, we'll be back in just a second. Okay folks, so here, here's a quick tech tip. When I took these pins and tried to run these pins through the linkage, it would not go through uh, the holes that were set in here. And I'm um, pretty sure that um, they're pretty close to being exact and uh, when it was painted, I think the thickness of the paint uh, gets inside the holes and prevents the, uh, the pins from sliding through freely. So I took a 5 30 seconds drill bit and just by hand I just ran it like this to uh, just to kind of flake off any paint that's inside those holes and now these pins flow uh, freely through it. Um, do it by hand, don't do it with a drill because uh, you don't want to open these up and make this uh, linkage super loose. So when you do it by hand it just chips the paint away and these fit pretty tightly in there but now they go through. So let's get this made up and over to the tractor. Okay folks, so there's the assembly now. Uh, the handle assembly is in. You can see that it operates the spool valve. Um, there are two longer pins and one shorter pin. The two long pins go through the handle assembly, the lever, and the shorter pin goes on this section of the linkage. There you can't tell by looking at them which one's longer and shorter until you have them all laying next to each other and then you can tell one is just a touch shorter. Um, I ran them in from the back side uh, so the horseshoe clips would be on the outside if for whatever reason I have to take this apart um, it's going to be a lot easier to pull these horseshoe clips off if it's on the outside of the assembly than on the inside of the assembly. I hope I never have to take any of these apart because these little pieces can be really difficult and frustrating to deal with in a tight space, uh, especially when you can't see so well. Um, but uh, here it is, it's done. We're gonna take it over now and uh, put it on the process block. Okay, so there's the hydraulic valve now up against the process block. Um, it's gonna flop around until we put the end on and um, it, it's tight to get inside here um, it uh, barely uh, didn't fit so I took this pin off right here in the back the top left one I ended up taking that pin off and it went right in and uh, that, that pins fairly easy to put back in uh, thank God it's up on top and you don't have to work around uh, anything else but um, that was the only real hiccup in getting it in. So it's in and uh, we're gonna keep moving. Okay, so here's the piece I've been calling the end block. It's the return port. Uh, because this is an L2501 with a front end loader, uh, we need the power beyond to keep the hydraulic fluid circulating um, and that we can use all the valves that are there, uh, especially the front end loader uh, on a Kubota. You can lift and curl at the same time. Um, so uh, it's important that uh, we have the fluid circulating throughout the whole system and that happens through power beyond. So we're going to make up this elbow onto here, we're going to put the two plugs in the return port and then head over to the tractor and I'll show you what hoses to disconnect and connect uh, so that this will work properly. Okay folks, so here we are over at the tractor and I have the return port uh, just sitting on the studs, it hasn't been tightened down yet. Uh, but I told you I'd come over and explain the hoses, uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at the hoses uh, on the third function valve. Okay, so this is the power beyond port that comes off the valve up on top. If you follow that hose up, you'll see that this is it right here. So we're going to loosen the bottom. We're going to remove the top and we can either spin this around or maybe I'll just take the hose right off and make it up on the return port and then slide it back in. Uh, that'll probably be the easiest way to do it. But yes, we want to connect this to the power beyond uh, on, on the hydraulic block that's behind the seat or under the seat. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to put a tray down underneath to catch any of the hydraulic fluid so I don't make a mess. And uh, we'll uh, go back over to the bench and make it up on the return port. Okay, so there you go. The return block is on, the uh, fittings are on into the power beyond, and the line is connected and made up. I did it over on the bench. So now it's time to just take those three nuts and washers and tighten this assembly up 
uh, against the process block and uh, hook up the hoses and uh, then we'll go to uh, the back of the machine where the quick disconnects get connected and uh, once they're up we'll get it fired up and check the operation. Okay guys, I don't mean to nag about this, but I know that this is the most confusing part of the whole thing if you don't understand hydraulics. Okay, power beyond. Power beyond pushes fluid to another device. That's the best way to remember it. Okay, and the loop has to be all connected so that fluid is traveling through all of the valves. So, this right here, it has that long 66 inch hose that we have on it. That's going to connect to the power beyond port of the third function valve okay and then this one down here this one right here is going to connect to the pump underneath okay uh, so that that can return the fluid to the pump so uh, this one right here all right this one right here is going to connect right here okay and then this one right here is going to connect underneath the tractor on that open nipple so essentially what's happening here is that the fluid is coming into here being pushed to the valve coming out of the valve and returning to the pump so I'm going to get these lines hooked up and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the hose is connected there. Hose is connected there like we discussed. Uh, I will tie them off after everything gets tested and leak checked. Uh, now the next thing to do is to connect those lines up to the quick couplers. So, they give us these lines here and uh, that is the end that's going to screw into the block and that is the end that's going to screw into the quick connector so let's uh, let's get these uh, plumbed in and and made up and and we'll go to the next step okay folks so there's the finished product cylinders hanging lines are piped in to the quick disconnects they looking pretty good there everything inside here is pretty tight so what I'll do is I'll put the camera on a tripod I'll start the machine up and we'll cycle the cylinder a couple of times and then I'll go ahead and put the cover on and give you the final look uh, at least from here so be right back alright folks here we are the moment of truth everything's hooked up I'm gonna go around and start it and cycle the cylinder purge some of the air out of it and check for leaks and hopefully we'll be able to wrap this up so hold on There we go seems to be operating pretty good I'm gonna throw that plate on and then I'll show you what it looks like from the top and that'll be it be right back all right folks so there's the finished product the plates on the stickers in place you can see how it looks uh, with the lever um, just kind of a quick note uh, when I push this forward it collapses the cylinder uh, and when I push it backwards it expands the cylinder just kind of an intuitive way of doing things um, but you can plumb it in any way that you want to. It's just a matter of swapping the lines around. So that's it. 
Uh, I want to thank Neil Conrarty for his video and for pointing out the inconsistencies in the instructions. I'm going to put a link to his uh, down in the description section. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave me some comments. I, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Good luck and Godspeed. Go to track. Out.